Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is John Charles, because today is the 11th of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's uh, morning session, recorded session, of course, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts that we looked at yesterday just to see how everything is getting along, and of course, some new ones. But uh, as always, before we do that, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, before we jump in, as always, uh, let's quickly mention our YouTube channel, which, which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD Research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top. Um, quick update on what's happening here globally. So. Unfortunately, the figure continues to rise. Uh, let me just uh, wait for this one to load up. Now, <clears throat> the of course, the total amount of infections uh, is still rising, unfortunately. Um, still, we have the so-called uh, leaderboard of infections is still US, uh, US, Brazil, Russia, United Kingdom uh, kind of got back into the, uh, uh, closer to the top. And uh, yep, and then followed by India. Uh, now, in terms of del total deaths, uh, the U.S. is in first place as well, uh, and then followed by U.K. Uh, and then followed by Brazil and Italy. So yep, uh, we're co we're continuing to monitor the situation here. The daily cases have risen again, but uh, yep, like I said, hopefully, uh, as I've mentioned yesterday in my video, uh, hopefully we'll see in this in this in this graph here. A possible head and shoulders pattern if we apply technical analysis on this one then uh, yep so which could signal a reversal but again for now we the only thing we can do is just observe so jumping into a few indices right now uh, the Nikkei uh, looking at the Nikkei right now you can see that the index is in the red and uh, basically uh, it still has a bit of time until it's gonna close but uh, yeah the index is in the red it's uh, sliding lower uh, um, previously, as you can see by the shifted arrows here, um, I haven't looked at I haven't looked at this one for quite a while. So in a way, uh, the more very important thing is that uh, the index kind of continued to trade above this upside support line. This is what I talked about previously, and this upside support line is taken from the low the third of April. Um, and as you can see, the um, the index uh, driven has driven has been driven nicely to the upside. Um, it found resistance near this uh, 23,150 territory, roughly around here. As you can see, it acted as a very good support previously on the 6th of June. Uh, here on the 6th of June, then acted as a good support here on the 18th of February, and now it took the role of resistance. So yep, um, it got held here. The price got held here, and now it's drifting back down so uh, we can adjust a few lines to be honest here and uh, we'll probably just get ri get rid of some but the index is moving lower however we can class that for now as long as it remains above this upside support line we can class this move as a temporary correction before another leg of buying so that's why uh, be very careful here guys um, if this upside line gets broken and the let's say the price starts falling somewhere below this area below the uh, the highest point of March which is around the uh, 21,720 zone then yep uh, lower levels could be met but until then uh, yes we could like I said see a bit more declines here 
uh, but we'll be very careful because here we do have the 21 day EMA which could also uh, act as a good area of support and uh, then kind of uh, open uh, if it does hold get, uh, hold uh, the price from moving lower then yes a nice good push higher could be possible and we may not even see a test of this upside support line so that's why for now aim for the 21 day EMA because as you can see here in the past for example in uh, around mid April uh, around uh, in the beginning of May it, it acted as a good area of support this 21 day EMA and uh, that's let's see if it can do the same trick again um, da, uh, da, uh, the German DAX and uh, yesterday as you can see it uh, it got held near this barrier and this is what I talked about in my morning video yesterday so in my morning video uh, what I was saying that um, we we saw the index kind of uh, getting back uh, the cash index at that at that time it was trading back above this uh, 12,671 zone but what I was saying yesterday was that the fact that the the previous uh, candle kind of uh, stayed this is by the way yesterday's candle this one is uh, the, pre the previous day so the 9th of June so the 9th of June candle stayed below the 12,671 zone and uh, this kind of what I was saying that this will this may increase the chances for uh, this index to correct a little bit lower um, but at the in during my morning video during my traders espresso the cash index was back above the 20 12,671 zone but what I was saying that the fact that we had the previous candle below this then it still kind of has the chance to drift lower and look what happened look it drifted back down it moved back below the 12,671 territory and is now it seems that now it could continue moving uh, a little bit lower if we look at the cash index and let me just quickly uh, have a look at that one uh, we can see that yes the 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 price is drifting further south now the big question here will be um, will we see a test of this upside support line to be honest most likely it there is a, a good possibility we could see something like that because uh, looking at the uh, the price and where it is right now it is currently balancing near the uh, 12,279 zone roughly around there so not far from this highest point of March so we'll keep an eye on this upside line uh, we'll see how it behaves uh, how the index behaves near this upside line and if it gets a hold up here then yes the bulls could uh, travel uh, could pick up on this one and, and push the index to the upside again now um, the reason why I have the downside uh, the downside scenario from this area and not from here because again uh, in a way if we get a break here uh, below the subside line and below this uh, 12,273 territory yes the index could drift lower uh, but it, it we do have a very strong area of support around here I talked about this one previously previously we were looking at this one as a is the strong area of resistance and it was a strong area of resistance it had to take a, a an upside gap to kind of overcome this area so that's why uh, we're gonna be carefully keeping an eye on this one because in a way even if the index drifts lower and tests this area and this area by the way is roughly around the between the 11,770 and 11,845 territories and uh, if, if this area does provide support maybe the bulls will could uh, re-enter the game around here because we also have the 200 day EMA so um, so yeah for now guys uh, that's why uh, I have my scenario that my downside scenario only on a break of this key area and only after that I will consider uh, slightly lower levels here we can even say that maybe this is going to be a bit of a neutral territory for us so keep your eyes on this one guys very interesting developments right now um, and uh, we'll keep an eye on this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May um, Brent oil quick update here um, so yesterday uh, the commodity remained above this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 22nd of April but today this morning we are seeing <clears throat> 
a bit of a, a flirt again with this upside line and the big question here is can this stay above this upside line but for now to be honest it doesn't seem to be the case um, however however we're not going to rush into conclusions yet because we are still above this 100 day EMA which could prov still provide support and the uh, the black liquid here could reverse and push to the upside again so that's why the downside scenario here is only from the 36.96 zone marked by the high of the 21st of May and a break below this level would also place the uh, place a Brent oil below the um, uh, below the 21 day EMA as well so maybe some more uh, sellers could see this as a as a bearish indication so that's why we'll uh, we'll keep this area a little bit of a neutral one and in terms of the upside we would need to see this one pushing back above the uh, this week's high near the 43.40 uh, and then yep we could consider more upside <clears throat> Um, now then, uh, gold, guys. So, excuse me, um, gold. Now, um, with gold, uh, it's working out perfectly according to the uh, idea that I've mentioned yesterday in my videos. And, uh, yep, the we had a nice break above this uh, 1723 territory. Um, it drifted higher. <clears throat> it closed the daily candle well above this. And now you're seeing today, we're seeing a bit of a correction to the downside. If this... Um, level here, the 17 point, uh, 1723 territory continues to provide decent support. We could see a nice rebound and a push to the upside. Um, now, with the upside here, um, of course, uh, as I've mentioned before in my yesterday's video, still the more uh, comfortable level for us is uh, after a break of the 1748 territory because, as you can see, it acted as a very strong area of resistance previously. So that's why we don't want to kind of maybe, let's say, rush into anything yet because, yes, the fact that uh, it managed to stay above the 1723 territory, yes, that's great, but as you can see, Today we're seeing this uh, kind of a, quite a decent correction already, I would say, uh, in comparison to the previous trading days. And uh, but of course it still has a chance to move higher because it still remains above this uh, well short-term tentative upside support line above the 1723 level. Uh, but it remains below the 1748 zone, so that's why we will be a bit on the cautious side. So uh, that's why we'll wait for a break above this area in order to aim for higher levels. In terms of the downside, pretty straightforward. A drop below the 1680 territory could do the trick for more sellers. Ethereum. A quick update here. To be honest, not much is happening. Not much is, but the fact that it kind of got closer a little bit to this key area of resistance, which it's struggling to overcome at 252.50 zone, uh, and that's by the way marked by the highest point of March. Um, so we need to see a clear move above this, and ideally a daily close in order to consider higher levels. Uh, until then, we're just keep uh, keeping an eye on this one because, well, I mean, it's just. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of still stuck above the upside support line, which of course is a positive sign. Uh, this upside support line is taken from the low the 13th of March, uh, but we need that confirmation break here above this barrier, above the 252.50 level in order to aim for higher levels. Um, ADJPY. Now here, uh, it's everything is kind of working okay. I've talked about this pair yesterday, and uh, basically it's drifting below the 74.47 zone. So yep, everything's kind of working nicely according to the idea, which I've mentioned that um, in a way we could see a bit of a, a larger correction here to the up, uh, to the downside. Now the reason why I'm saying correction because we're still above this upside support line taken from the low of the 2nd of April. Um, so in a way we could see this one drifting lower. Uh, maybe testing the 72.41, 42 zone, and maybe then rebounding and pushing higher. Maybe it won't even test this this upside support line, and and the the 200 day EMA kind of could be enough for it. So that's why for now, from the very short term perspective, guys, uh, yes, we are leaning a little bit more to the, the to the downside, uh, but this downside will be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. Um, however. Also keep your eyes on this level here, the 74.47 today, because if we do see a daily candle closing below this, then yes, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll consider this uh, idea of a correction. However, if it fails to close below this level, below the 74.47, well, 
maybe actually we won't see a, a larger correction to the downside. Maybe this um, th this will be enough of, uh, for this pair to uh, uh, this little move lower here <clears throat> will be seen as that little correction, and that's why we maybe could see a nice uh, uprise again. But again, for now, uh, for now we're leaning towards um, we're leaning more towards the uh, a larger correction to the downside. Uh, USD CAD now very quickly here. So of course yesterday we we, we had the FOMC statement, um, and uh, initially kind of the the dollar fell, but then recovered something. Uh, it fell in during the first half of the uh, before the FOMC say statement, and then managed to recover somewhat. And today you're seeing we're seeing a nice boost here. Uh, we're seeing that the Mm, the dollar is traveling back above this barrier and this is what I talked about uh, yesterday basically where I was covering USD CAD and I was saying that in a way um, if if it gets back above the 1.3465 uh, territory right here then there is a possibility to see maybe a larger correction to the upside now I, you can see I have a few lines here a few downside lines but to be honest both of them are a bit tentative we will just keep an eye on both of them for now but uh, in a way like I said the fact that if we see a daily candle closing here above the 1.3465 territory then this increases the chances of a potential uh, larger correction to the upside here towards the 200 day EMA initially uh, but if that is just seen as a temporary obstacle then a break of it could open the door towards slightly higher levels so yep can for now guys today keep your eyes on the 1.3465 territory roughly around there and that's marked by the high of the 28th of February, or in other words, the highest point of February. Um, <clears throat> GBP Aussie. Um, so uh, this is quite um, a bit messy, I would say, but quite interesting. So uh, I talked about this one. This is just a quick update, but uh, yep, everything's kind of looking quite interesting. Uh, you can see that today the trading uh, is already in the positive territory a little bit. Um, and it's very close near to the uh, yesterday's high, near the 1.8337 zone. So we'll wait for a nice good push above this in order to aim for higher levels. So if we do get a nice push above that barrier, then yep, uh, we'll aim for higher levels. We'll aim for the uh, for further acceleration to the upside. However, uh, for now, uh, for now, like I said, we will have to just wait basically. So uh, we cannot really do anything here. We cannot really talk about the downside and really we cannot really well, we can consider the upside, but just let, let's just wait for that little confirmation, just in case, like I said, just to be on the safe side. Uh, quick update on Euro Aussie, uh, similar story here. Um, I talked about this one uh, yesterday as well, and uh, basically I was saying to keep an eye on this barrier here, the 1.6366 level, and uh, for now everything is kind of looking quite positive uh, from the short-term perspective, of course, because uh, don't forget that we are still uh, trading here below some of these downside lines, one of which could be this one right here, taken from the from the high of the 4th of May. And in a way, the pair, the pair could travel higher, but it could find resistance near this downside line. So that's why uh, we would like to have a nice, good, strong move above this downside line, above all of its EMAs, and then target uh, higher levels. Until then, uh, the, we will, what we'll look at is only the short-term perspective. From the short-term perspective, and uh, as I said, a push above the 1.6366 zone uh, could do the trick here for more buyers in the near term. And uh, yep, uh, we could see maybe a push towards this downside line or some of these uh, EMAs here. And finally, Euro USD. So here the situation is quite interesting and this is what I talked about yesterday. Now the fact that it managed to move above the one this 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 level right here this key barrier the 1.1384 um yes that's great but this is what I was talking about basically what I was saying that we need to see a nice daily close above some, some levels like that because uh, as you can see we had a drift higher um it pushed nicely to the upside it broke heavily and nicely above this above that 1.1384 but it closed the daily candle below it so and now this morning we're seeing a bit of a decline here so in a way this idea which I've drawn previously this uh, correction lower and then another up, up move could be possible because um, now again we could see this one drifting back down maybe testing this area again and basically this way kind of kind of for forming this range here 
and uh, uh, this could kind of uh, be a nice area of support from where it could this uh, 1.1237 zone could be a nice area of support from where the pair could rebound again and try to maybe overcome the upper upper bound here of the range because at this moment here then we would have ourselves a nice range for now it's not a range for now it's just uh, well just random well, not random but some key support and resistance levels um, but again keep your eyes on this one right now like I said guys uh, what we don't want to see here is again uh, this range um, but uh, eventually probably that might happen again unless uh, the the pair will reverse sharply to the upside and overcome this 1.1384 zone so basically long story short guys in order to aim for higher levels we need to, to see at least a daily close above this what level uh, above this 1.1384 zone and in terms of the downside we'll look at this level the 1.1237 zone which could potentially become uh, the lower bound of the range a break of it could open the door towards slightly lower areas so keep your eyes on this one so guys i really hope you found it useful and uh thank you very much for watching and listening uh keep your eyes on the economic calendar today because we do have the uh u.s initial jobless claims and of course the continuing jobless claims uh, both figures are um expected to have fallen a little bit but of course, we'll see the, uh, how it's how it's going to be because uh, with the initial jobless claims, for example, the oh, the figure for the past probably two months, the figure. Uh, uh, was always expected to be lower than the previous however it always came out uh, a little at least a little bit uh, larger than the forecast so uh, that's why yes the like I said the the, the current forecast is uh, to be uh, like a little bit less than the the previous number but like I said for now, history shows that uh, that the figure kind of uh, tends to come out larger. Let's see if today's uh, this uh, this week is going to be uh, an ex uh, an exception, and we'll see a, a much lower number. But uh, yep, don't get your hopes up too much. So, guys, I really hope you found it useful, and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope. Like I said, I hope you'll catch my video later on, my trader's tea time, as always, around 13, 15 GMT time. But for now, have a wonderful trading day, guys, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.